I want to share um, for a few minutes, and then actually, if the worship team wants to go ahead and start coming up, we're going to have worship again in a second, well, a few minutes. All of today, we've been talking about the power of Jesus, the power and the blood of Jesus, right? We have it as the center, the reason that we experience and realize God's power is because of what Jesus did through his death and resurrection. Revelation 12, 11, we started with that. It's the testimony, we see the defeat because of the blood of the lamb and the testimony of their word, right? This is what we get to see. This is what we get to experience. And so we've heard story after story, and some are really amazing. And I'm thankful for the group of women who have shared vulnerably that they're in the middle. And I wanted to share a little today because I feel like I have seen some radical things. I have seen God do some radical things. And so you've, you've heard some of them, right? I've gotten to share some of, my pe- some of the people who have experienced radical, God's radical power and healing and love and grace and all of these things. And I've seen it and it's amazing. And sometimes I just want to talk about for a, fa- for a minute that it doesn't end quite as we expected. And we heard some of that in some of our stories today. And so sometimes we walk into these situations and we, we are praying and we're hopeful. And, and then it, we are expecting a miracle. And we know God can do it, right? It's not a lack of faith that God can do it. But for some reason, the ending doesn't end the way that we think it, that it should. And it doesn't always end happily ever after. And I want to talk about that for a minute. I think a lot of times we see things happen when we pray in a few different categories, and I want to talk about them. And so I talked to you earlier. You met Caitlin, and she shared her story that she couldn't keep food down. And I, I told you, I, I felt like I needed to contend for her, and I did, and I prayed for her. And so on my desk in my prayer room, I can write on my desk, and if you look at the desk right now, there's six names, six people that I had felt a couple years ago, I am going to contend for them. I'm going to pray for them. This isn't like, yeah, I'll pray for you. It is like I am going to contend and intercede. And I know that God can, can rectify whatever that situation is. And so I have these six names that I'm praying for regularly. And Caitlin is number one on that list. And yeah. And there's a little star by your name right now because we saw this amazing powerful, radical healing. I knew God could do it, and he did, and it's so amazing, and it's so encouraging. But I have to be honest. And as we're having this conversation, I have to tell you a little bit about number three. The third person on my list was my friend Stephen. And Stephen has wrestled with mental illness, suicidal ideation for several years. And I walked this journey with him because remember I shared, I struggled with suicidal ideation. And so not last November, but the the number November before he and I had a two-hour conversation and I asked the questions like I always do. This is spirit, what's the spiritual component? What are you doing physically, emotionally, and spiritually? And we we had some really honest conversations. I contended for Stephen. And last August, Stephen believed the lie, and he took his life. It didn't end as I expected. And I still am walking with that grief. I don't live in guilt and shame. I could have, should have, don't have. But I, and I don't, I'm not mad at God. God is good and is for us. God was for him. And thankfully, Um, I know those things. But it didn't end as I expected. And so here's this list of six people. In one, I saw radical transformation. In one, I, I walk away a little scratching my head. And I say that because we've all walked through circumstances, every one of us, where we've prayed and we've seen radical transformation. And we've prayed and it didn't end as we expected. And I just want to acknowledge that, that sometimes that's the case. And I'm not here, we are not going to dive deep into some theological study. 
to try and navigate all that. I don't, I don't need to explain it. I'm just saying this, okay? That's another conversation for another day. But I never want our experience to change our theology. Don't let your experience change your theology. It didn't, it didn't end the way I had hoped with Stephen, but does it stop me from praying for somebody else? No. Does it stop me from hosting a conference to talk about God's power? No. Right? We don't let it change who God is. Is God still a good, loving, pursuing God? Yes. And so my challenge and encouragement is when we pray and contend and we walk away and we say, I don't fully understand this, we don't change our theology. God, God still desired for Stephen to experience the fullness and wholeness that he created him to have. I believe that. I know that. Like, we don't change our theology. God loves the, like, oh, God doesn't love me because he didn't take this away. We don't change our theology to say, oh, I must live with this particular condition. Alyssa talked about anxiety. Well, I must, God just must have created me anxious, so I'm just going to hold on to this. That's, no, that's not, that's not good theology. God uses hard things for our good, right, sinful, broken things, but he doesn't cause the sinful, broken things. So we don't want to change our theology based on our experience, and that's my encouragement and challenge to you. And it's my own wrestling, I'll be honest. And I want, I like this event because we're honest. We're sometimes in the middle, and sometimes things just don't quite make sense. But God is good and is for us. I wholeheartedly believe that. I trust him. And he is for my good and for his glory. Every time. He is for my good and for his glory. There's a third way that sometimes prayers end as well. I mean, there's a lot of ways. Again, we're not getting that deep in those things, okay? <laughs> I love prayer, so if you ever want to talk to me about prayer, I've got all sorts of, we can talk about all the ways, okay? Today I want to talk about three ways. So sometimes it goes exactly as we expect. Sometimes we walk away and we scratch our head. And sometimes we walk away and we scratch our head and God reveals it later. And so I want to tell you a quick story about this happening in my life. Um, so for a little context, I got a call one day, which is out of the blue, that we may have the opportunity to foster and then adopt a little boy. His name is Gio. And uh, prior to that, we had lost a baby full term. We had kind of said, hey, God, if you want us to do something with kids, you have to do it. And so out of the blue, in God's pursuit, <laughs> nobody ever gets a phone call. Do you want to adopt a kid? Uh, we got one. We actually got two of those calls. Uh, and so we get this phone call, and it's, it's years after this loss. And my number one request with God is that it be fast. God, if you're going to allow us to adopt this little boy, awesome. Thank you. If you're not, I trust you, you're good, you're for me, but could you make it go fast? My heart, right, you have to remember, I was pregnant 40 full weeks, and we lost him at birth, okay? And so my heart can't handle this. My heart can't handle this. Could you answer it quick? And so um, it's not quick. <laughs> the long and short of it is it's not quick. And I remember there being particular, so COVID hits, that slows things down. In While COVID hits, so this is all in 2020, or 20, at the end of 2019, then COVID hits. He's about to be placed with us. COVID hits. Puts it on delay. His mom comes back into his life. She's doing really well. And so over the next three years, so for three and a half years, we are in this. Is that fast? No, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> and it's up and down. And if anybody knows anything about fostering, it's hard, okay? Because you go to court and then they say, you know, so and so is going to get more time. And you're in this wrestle. I never prayed that we would get him. I know that, that sounds weird. I never wanted, I, that wasn't, I, I wanted God to do what God needed to do. But he knew my heart. He knew I wanted him. But I also wasn't going to fight a mom for her kid. And that's where I was. And so his mom's doing really well. And so we get three and a half years in. And this is what, uh, and Gio has now lived with us for over two years at this point, two and a half years. He now has 
call, started calling us mom and dad. We are established as a family. His mom's doing awesome. She's coming three days a week. He's spending the night with her. And so we get to three and a half years, and CSB comes to us, and the, the social worker says, hey, this is what's going to happen. There is no way that you're going to win and win full custody of Gio. You will have one of two options. Either he will go full-time back with his mom. Again, she's doing awesome. Or it's going to be legal custody. That means shared parenting with somebody I never married, right? And so every other, every other holiday, he goes there. We share some finances. He would primarily live with me. And Tim and I say yes because we love this kid. Whatever we can get, we'll take, okay? So three and a half years in, we go to court. And at court, they're going to decide, does he go with mom full time? Or do we have this weird, what feels like a divorce situation? Shared parenting. And she walks in and she says, I relinquish my rights to Tim and Noel Beck as long as they adopt him. Now, yeah, you could, you could clap. <laughs> and almost four years to the day, from the day I met Gio until the day that he was officially adopted, it was four years, God did not answer my prayer. He did not answer my prayer. And I remember moments leaving court with tears in my eyes saying, like, God, the only thing I asked was some form of closure at this particular court hearing, some form of closure here. And I remember feeling discouraged. Over and over, I said these things. God, I trust you. I know you're good. I know you're in this. But I'm confused. Why didn't you make it go fast? And the answer to that question is because I needed to build a relationship with Mama Matt. And three and a half years was long enough for Mama Matt to like us, become part of our family, and decide that it was in the best interest of her biological son to have me as his mom. You know what I did last Saturday? I hosted a six-year-old birthday party. You know who came? Mama Matt. <laughs> Mama Matt has watched both of my children. My daughter loves her. She calls her Mama Matt. And after the party on Sunday, I got a text from Mama Matt that said, hey, I didn't get a chance to tell you, but I wanted to let you know. I think you're a really great parent, and I love you. This is what God does. This is what God does. This has little to do. This isn't a story about Noel Beck. This is a story about God, and he is good, and he is for us, and he is faithful. Guess what? Had we gotten custody of Gio day one, week one, year one, we would have been the enemy who took her kid, and she would be angry at us. But instead, we have a reconciled relationship. She understands she's another parent to her biological kid. And at the same time, my daughter calls her Mama Matt and gets watched by her. Do you understand? This is the only thing that God can do. And so when we walk into these circumstances and we say, I don't get it. I'm scratching my head. God, you didn't do it the way that I kind of thought you could. Like, you were, did you want to take my advice? Because I have a really good idea right? This is what we do. And, and so to continue to go back to the core of, God, you're good. I trust you. I believe that what you're going to, I'm trying to understand this circumstance. Now, I'm not here to put a pat answer on what happened with my friend Stephen. I'm not here to say, guess what? In five years, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tell you X, Y, Z. I think God can bring good from it. But I won't necessarily have this beautifully packaged, reconciled answer like I do with Gio that took four years. And so I just want to encourage you in a couple things as we're kind of wrapping up the day. One, God is powerful. I want you to know that, understand it, trust it. I need you to understand that God is for your good and for his glory. He really is. He works all things, even sinful, broken things that have happened in our world for his glory. He doesn't do those things, but he uses those things. 
I need you to know that God is good and he is trustworthy. And so in all circumstances, we continue to go back. I don't get it. It's okay to say that. I don't get it, but I trust you. And my strong encouragement is don't shift your theology because of your experience. If I would have walked away three years in and said, God just doesn't listen to my prayers. I'm done. I would have missed out. Right? We can miss out. And so I have to quote well, the best thing to do, to quote to you and encourage you in it, is to quote scripture. Yeah, we love scripture. The Bible is the best. Luke 18, 1. This is the parable of the persistent widow. And Jesus tells this pers- Jesus tells a story, okay? Really quick synopsis. Persistent widow goes to the judge, continues to essentially pester him. And then he finally says, yes, I will give it to you, right? Go read it. Luke 18, it's awesome. But here's the verse that I want to quote to you right now. And that is Luke 18, 1. And he told them, this being Jesus, he told them a parable to the effect that you ought to always pray and not lose heart. Always pray and not lose heart. And that's my encouragement to you. No matter what your circumstance is, continue to pray. Continue to contend. Continue to intercede. We have this amazing privilege and opportunity to interact with the creator of the universe. Do you understand that? Like, he who spoke things into being gives us full access to himself. That's why the tur- curtain was torn in two. That's why it's such a big deal. That's Mark 15:8, uh, I think. The curtain's torn in two because we have direct access to him. And prayer is the exact way that we have direct access to him. Now, the number one reason that we have prayer is for intimacy, communion, and union with him. Intimacy, union, communion with him. The number one reason we have prayer is intimacy, union, communion with him. Why do I say that? Because I don't want us to get into the ask, 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 right? Intimacy. And as we know him and as we're intimate with him, then we know his heart. Man, God stirred my heart. I spend time with him. I know him. I commune with him. I am intimate with him. And then he stirs my heart for my friend Caitlin, who I only meet one time, and he says, walk this journey with her, right? And because we know him well, it's like knowing your spouse or your best friend well. Right? If I asked you, will your best friend like X or, you know, this movie or that thing, you know the answer. You know their personality. You know what stirs their heart. And God, and when we're in union and communion and intimacy with him, we get to know his heart. And he stirs us. He stirs us. He knows I love prayer, so he lets me pray for people. Right? And he stirs my heart in my knowing of him to walk this journey with Caitlin. And I do, and I get to. And I'm so excited that I get to. So pray pray and don't lose heart. Pray and don't lose heart. God is good and is for you. He gives us this opportunity to pray. And so he gives it to us to pray. But then also don't miss out on the privilege and opportunity to intercede and pray for others. It's not like, oh, eh, all right, I'll pray. I keep telling you, if you want to invite me to something, invite me to prayer, okay? Like, so amazing. Do you see, like, God does some crazy things, and we get to just be part. This is all in 2 Corinthians 5 where he talks about we get to reconcile others to himself. He gives us the ministry of reconciliation. Anyways, I digress. Uh, prayer is powerful. It's for union and communion with him. Don't miss the opportunity to pray for others and trust that he is good and for us and hears us. And also, when it doesn't work out the way that you think, don't create bad theology. Don't tell yourself a lie that he doesn't hear or he wants you to be this way or he doesn't love you. Man, he is for you. He loves you. He wants what's best for you. Continue to trust him even if it doesn't make sense in that moment. We're going to jump back into some worship and scripture. And scripture also is the testimony. So in that Revelation passage, it's not just our sharing our story, but the word of God is his testimony. It's powerful. So we're going to walk back into worship and some scripture. And my encouragement is, if you have been stirred, hey, I should have gotten prayed for the last time we had prayer offered, and I didn't. Now's your chance, okay? The Holy Spirit is telling you right now. Yeah, you can still get prayed for. Um, and so if you're sitting here and you want to be prayed for, great. We're going to worship together. Same thing as before. If you want to engage in communion, whatever you want to do. But don't let, uh, don't believe any lies. That's just my encouragement right now. Don't believe any lies that God doesn't want to interact with you 
or if it hasn't happened the way that you expect, don't create a lie. Don't believe a lie. God, you are good. Thanks that you have given us full access to you and intimacy and communion and union with you. Thank you for Jesus' death and resurrection that allows us to have that ability to connect with you. God, I pray now for anyone who's just wrestling even with it didn't happen the way that I expected. God, give, give light and freedom. God, continue that every person in this room experiences you in a new way that feels lighter and freer and they know and trust that every woman know and trust that you love them, that you're for them and you're trustworthy. You are a good, good father. Thanks for being our father in your son's name. Amen. that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and he rescues. Anybody need deliverance today and rescuing today? He delivers and he rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth he who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions there's an army
immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. We prayed for some of you praying for your children. She fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. As she begged him to deliver her daughter, as she cried out for him to save her daughter, she turned around and went home when that was over and her daughter was healed. There's an army rising up.
salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today, this day, for the Egyptians, for the enemy that you see today, you will never see again because God is the greatest power. He is the greatest power. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel, tell the people of God to go forward. Go forward. Not be bound in anxiety and fear. Go forward. Go forward. God is the greatest power.
sometimes God responds to the posture of your praise yes I know everybody may not worship and praise the same way but the attitude and the posture of your heart should be one that celebrates the presence of God when you see it and when you recognize it understand that it is your faith that activates this atmosphere it is nothing that any one person has done on this day it was your faith it was the fact that you did not give up it was the fact that you kept on pressing you kept on persevering and you kept on going that is what creates this atmosphere where miracles can happen don't leave here the same way that you came be like that woman with the issue of blood who had decided that she had gotten to the end of everything that she had tried. And she said, if I could just touch. So whatever you do, whatever you need to do to get to the presence of God, whatever you need to do to touch the hem of his garment, whatever you need to do to get into his presence, whatever you need to do, for some people that may look like a dance. For others, it will be words of encouragement. For someone else, it might be a hug. For others, it may be the tears that are rolling down your face. For someone else, it's just you standing in acknowledge of him with your hands, lifted and raised in his presence. Don't leave here without getting what you came here for. The devil is a liar. Noel said it earlier today. He uses the same three chicks over and over again. He used them in the Garden of Eden, on Adam and Eve. He used them on Jesus when he was tempted. Same three. You'll see the pattern. But the devil is a liar. That circumstance that he keeps telling you is going to last forever is not. My God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. There was a time that he said this will begin, and there was also a time that he said this will end. This too shall pass. It will not always be this way. If I don't change everything around you, I will change you in the midst of it, but it will not always stay this way. I am God, and I do not change. I show up the same way for all of my kids. I love all of you the same way. And if he did it for me, I'm standing as a living witness that he will do it for you. He will heal a broken heart. He will mend your families. He will put what's broken back together again. So I encourage you. Stand on the power that lies within his word. Amen. It's Noel. Oh, we're grateful to be together. And this, thank you, worship team, so much for hosting us today or for leading us today. Thank you, Remini Church and Pastor Lisa, for hosting uh, the conference here. And thank you guys for coming. I am grateful to just be a small part of this day as God continues to interact and with each of you as he pursues his relationship with you. Thanks for being part of today. We're around. If you want to talk to one of the speakers or be prayed for, we're still here for a bit. So thank you so much. Have a fantastic day.